In anticipation of the second Sunday of Lent, let us listen to these words from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or dis distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Not in all of these things. We are more conquerors through him who loved us. Please join in the gathering prayer. Lord God, in your loving goodness, you did not spare your only begotten son, but gave him up for our salvation. In this time of repentance, strengthen our faith in your mercy and help us to turn our heads and minds more fully to you, that we may follow carefully in the footsteps of Christ and live as your people. Guide staff, students, and their families as they journey through the Lenten season. Fill them with the knowledge of your love and the assurance of your mercy, that they may stand firm in faith and living in accordance with your own design, someday join you in heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'll proceed with our land acknowledgement. The Creator gifted us with this land that we are blessed to share and care for together. The Calgary Catholic School District acknowledges the land we gather on, Mokinstis, is the ancestral territory of the Siksiki Sitapi, the Siksika Gayani, Pikani, Amskapi Pikani. We acknowledge all the Treaty 7 signatories, including the Satina people, as well as the Yarhe Nakoda nations, Bearpaw, Chiniki, and Wesley. This land is also the home of Metis Nation three and all other people who make their home here. And with that, um, we'll um, proceed with uh, uh, the meeting itself. Um, before we approve the agenda, I've had a request to pull item 3.5, the chief superintendent report uh, from the agenda. So we will do that and place it as the new item 8.3. And with that, if I could have a motion. So Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Trustees amends the agenda by moving item 3.5, Chief Superintendent Report from the Consent Agenda and renumber as 8.3 under item eight, Information. Perfect, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. So Madam Chair, I move that the Board of Trustees approves the agenda as amended. Thanks, all those in favor? Perfect, thank you. And if I could have another motion. Madam Chair, I'd move that the Board of Trustees moves to meet in private. Thank you. All those in favor? Great. So, thanks. All right. So we will reconvene at uh, between quarter after and 20 after. Quarter after is better. Thanks so much. All members of our community are sacred and must be treated with dignity and respect. We value excellence in, the Catholic, uh, in Catholic education, guided by shared responsibility as shepherds and the moral authority of the church. Um, I understand that we have um, two guests with us today and um, we have the board. Thank you so much for taking the time uh, to be with Calgary Catholic this afternoon. Apologize uh, for, uh, for the wait and uh, the delay. Um, and as are our public board meetings, they are meetings that are held in public. They uh, do not um, allow an opportunity for um, the public to participate in the meeting, but you are certainly most welcome uh, as observers. And with that, I will open our meeting with uh, our gathering prayer. Um, joining together during this Lent, during this season of Lent, we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us listen to these words from the Psalms. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering to you, you would not be pleased. 
The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Please join in our gathering prayer. Look kindly upon us, O oh Lord, and guide us on our journey that our Lenten devotions may fill us with an abundance of your grace. Renew our hearts and minds and bear the fruit of good works. With the help of your Holy Spirit, may we overcome all that separates us from your love and live in more perfect union with you. Make us models of holiness that those we lead by word and example may be drawn to the waters of faith. Bless district staff, students, and their families during this holy season and strengthen them as they commit themselves to repentance and renewal. May their hearts be renewed in your love, ready to avoid the temptations of this world and conformed to Christ's humble service. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And our land acknowledgement. The Creator gifted us with this land that we are blessed to share and care for together. The Calgary Catholic School District acknowledges the land we gather on, Mokinstis, is the ancestral territory of the Siksikiapi, the Siksika, the Guyani, the Pikani, the Amskapi Pikani. We acknowledge all the Treaty 7 signatories, including the Satina people, as well as the Iarhe Nakoda nations, Bearspaw, Chiniki, and Wesley. This land is also the home of Métis Region 3 and all other people who make their home here. And with that, we can move to um, our presentation and review of the accountability report on student welfare. And with that, I'll turn it to our chief superintendent. Thank you, Madam Chair. And so joining me this evening is Superintendent Andrea Haloka, who leads up the work in this area of student welfare. And I would like to thank her for all of the work put into designing uh, this particular report. Uh, now, this is the first pass, uh, uh, first look at the Student Welfare Accountability Report. And so it is in draft form. And with that, I'd like to turn it to Superintendent Haloka to walk us through the document. Thank you, Dr. Zumas, and through the chair. Um, it's my pleasure to share the first draft of this report with you. Uh, there are three QIs involved. Um, the first being uh, the, the, the uh, chief superintendent ensures that there's developed measurements and monitors progress related to providing welcoming, caring, safe, and respectful learning environments. So within that, uh, we share with you again, uh, the accountability pillar results survey, which demonstrates um, the responses from students, staff, and parents regarding their viewpoint on the district indeed being a safe and caring environment. Uh, we also share with you the student voice survey results of the questions related to the Champions Initiative from last year regarding the um, care of at least one adult in their school who knows and cares about them or considers them to be a champion. And again, those are metrics that are demonstrating that our students do in fact feel safe and cared for. Uh, also on page two, we provide an overview and numbers of congregated programs and supports, um, particularly in our diverse learning programs, as well as our English language learning programs. Uh, on page three, we do provide some data for you on requests for support through both St. Leo Center and St. John Reception Center. And we do break it down by year as well as by um, the different groups that receive referrals. And again, um, there would be some, um, some decrease from last year due to the fact that requests for support were not able to be completed during the time of COVID. And also some restructuring of our supports um, surrounding the kindergarten therapy program. Um, that occurred this year as a result of the elimination of RCSD uh, being provided. And also you'll see there the St. John Reception Center um, and the, res the referrals that they have received as well. Again, demonstrating uh, quite a bit of work done by that team as well to respond to student needs. On page four, um, we do mention about the um, student mental health support that we participated in, um, in providing some uh, ability to re-enter students into school in September. And so definitely wanted to demonstrate our commitment to the mental health of students, especially in the time of COVID, as well as any supports that we provided that were related to our district priority of student mental health. 
And we do <coughs> give a breakdown of that on page four. We also mentioned the nonviolent crisis intervention and some other interventions that we have continued to engage in training to keep our students safe and our staff prepared to support students who require um, emergent need and care. Uh, we do mention in this section that for our inclusive communities that any student request for a group formation has been met with 100% of support by schools. So that continues to demonstrate that any students wanting to form a group is supported um, at, every, at every school where that comes forward. Uh, then we move into just ensuring that we are compliant with student conduct and we, um, we still participated with the alternative suspension program with the YMCA and provide some metrics on that. And that moves us into QI 3.2, which is the analysis of incident reports. So this comes through our electronic accident and incident reporting system, uh, which we partner with USIC on. And we give you some just some um, basic statistics on the main causes of injury, um, student accidents by severity, student accidents by grade, as well as student accidents by location. And uh, it's a pretty similar trend as in previous years that there are more accidents incurred by students in the lower grades and in generally in locations where uh, we would imagine them to be mostly occurring when they are on the creative playground, gymnasium, playing field, and tarmac. QI 3.3. Uh, the board's request provides a report on facilities where new supports have been provided and where there are challenges in meeting student needs. So we definitely uh, provide a lot of support for our students with diverse learning needs. And we do so through the district's um, commitment to 135 congregated diverse learning classrooms. So we do provide that information and links to those classes to learn about them specifically. We also provide to you the new programs that we offered last year, as well as program moves. The modifications is um, a lot of partnership done between the learning services team, as well as the construction and maintenance department to plan for and support students as they enter into our district or move up uh, to new schools as they age up within our district. And you can see um, just a, a list of the types of needs that are given but we do have a complete listing in the link uh, there of all the building modifications that did occur, as well as emergent requests that came through during the year. On page eight, we provide, again, to assist with these complex challenges we face, we list the partnering agencies we work with to help with that support. So we continue to have a partnership um, with Renfrew Educational Services, Alberta Health Services, PrEP, Hull, Woods Homes, and we also support three students who are homebound with their medical care and education assistance. And we, uh, we have also employed a very large therapy team of our own to provide speech, occupational, and physical therapy to students that used to come under uh, the RCSD model. So on page nine, we provide the identified strengths. So we feel that they are in two categories. One is providing personalized support to our diverse learners through uh, the programs, the collaboration to make sure our buildings and infrastructure is supportive, uh, partnering with agencies and ensuring we have accommodations for individual students. And the second area of supports is surrounding mental health support and promotion for students. Uh, certainly taking special care with students upon re-entry this year, providing a great deal of professional growth for our staff and supporting students analyzing surveys and ensuring that we are using that data to guide us and providing welcoming, caring, and safe environments through our communities of caring. Some of the past challenges that we reported on in 2019-20 in were that we saw an increasing complexity in number of diverse learning and English language learner students, as well as um, just really making sure that we are very diligent in the completion of risk management reports and incident investigations. So to mitigate those challenges, um, we again continue to provide supports through congregated programs and schools, uh, review student physical needs and provide supports at home and in schools medically. Uh, we try to provide supports to our families as well to empower them and really work through ensuring mental health literacy programs for our students and staff. 
And then for our risk management, um, just really working with our administrative teams regarding investigations and ensuring that we're uh, working to report using the uh, updated EARS system. Looking at new challenges and strategies moving forward, uh, there are actually many of our new challenges are continuing complexity of programming, student mental health needs, and really ongoing staff and student safety during the pandemic has been a real focus this year. The strategies that we have been Im implementing for complexity of programming, we continue to find the best supports for each individual student and their families. Uh, but one new uh, complexity we had to manage this year was being able to support some of our complex learners online. And so to do so, we had diverse learner programs at both St. Isidore and St. Anne. And we also have the continued need to open new programs. We also um, really worked hard to have mental health supports for students and for professional development for staff to support those students upon re-entry. And we just continue our staff training and support. And we are going to be very shortly rolling out a suicidal ideation protocol through our counseling teams to make sure that we are doing our due diligence and supporting those students. And then lastly, of course, um, there's been tremendous work on the district's pandemic safety protocols and maintaining ongoing communication with stakeholders regarding the pandemic. And then lastly, uh, generative governance considerations. Uh, different areas of advocacy. One would be student complexity. Obviously, this is well known to the trustees about the complexity we serve in Calgary Catholic and the need to continue to advocate for appropriate support from our government to be able to support those students. Uh, the funding obviously associated with that is still of great need for our school districts to be able to support these students. And then of course we have the basis of our faith, which is always of important advocacy area for our trustees, because we know that within our Catholic communities of caring and sharing the good news certainly supports our students through our faith as well. And so through this, we would obviously recommend that the three QIs be fulfilled. And uh, I turn it back to Chief Superintendent, Dr. Zoomless uh, to receive any feedback from the trustees. Thank you, Superintendent Haloka, for all of your work on this uh, report. And so over to you, Chair Martin. Certainly, and I'll turn it to trustees for uh, questions or comments. I've got a couple, but I see Trustee Wil Wellman. To you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a really quick question uh, in respect to the YMCA and the alternative suspensions program. Uh, I found it very interesting to see that actually the number of participating schools for 2019-2020 went down. Um, and it's a bit of a concern knowing that this program is has you know a structure uh, to help with the mental health component, and we've all heard how you know the stresses of, of COVID nineteen has had an impact on the mental well being of our, our students. Um, it was just a little bit of a concern, and so my question is: Do schools just volunteer? Like, do they? What is it they need to do in order to access the alternatives? suspension program through the Y. Is there anything special? No, it is, uh, sorry, if I may answer, um, they, they can certainly opt in. So this information is made known to all the schools. Um, certainly some of it has to do with proximity of a YMCA site to the schools. Okay. Um, and then obviously the other part of it is the schools may not have had a suspension and, uh, and may not have participated in it or parents, Parents have to agree to it. So parents may often have their children at home as well. Okay, thank you. And Madam Chair, just to build upon what Superintendent Haloka has shared, the actual numbers of 52 referrals, which is less than half of 2018, 2019, but you look at the number of schools participating is 21. That number is actually pretty significant because you had much, you had fewer, suspensions with 21 schools. So imagined if that number was more than doubled, 52, if it was 113 and we're already at 21, you would see a much larger number. So it really shows that we are, like if, if we didn't have COVID and it was just a normal year, you probably would have seen a much higher number because we were trending in that direction. Yep. Any further questions from trustees? Trustee D'Souza? 
my hand function is not working. I was just curious to know, you know, when we have the report on the number of physical accidents that happen in the schools and we track that, does that affect our insurance uh, in terms of, you know, the numbers going up or numbers going down and any anything? To the chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, of course, our insurance providers are always looking at this information. And in our uh, meeting today, I would like to call upon Superintendent Narin Kishin Shindani because this falls under his department. And so please feel free to chime in here, Superintendent Kishin Shindani. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zumlis. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes, insurance uh, through the USIC network, this is one of the critical pieces that is uh, front and center at all times. We keep a track of this. And again, it really comes down to our experience relative to the other 13 member boards within the USIC network. And we're generally one of the better performing boards. So I think this is, this is something that uh, has, has worked to our benefit, uh, at least in the more recent years. So uh, at this point, the sum and substance of what I'm saying is there is no concern in terms of the insurance rates being adversely impacted uh, based on our, our recent experience. Thank you. Any further questions from trustees? Seeing none, I've got just a couple of, just two. Um, and it was more with respect to- um, I did have my hand up. Oh, I see it now, Trustee Williams. Um, I, yeah, I do have a question through the chief with respect to the risk management. When we have a P3 situation, who has to cover that off? Is it us or is it our partner? Thank you, Madam Chair. And I will defer back to Superintendent Kishin Shindani on this one. So uh, just to uh, seek some clarity, thank you, Dr. Zumblis. Madam Chair, uh, just to seek clarity, uh, when there is uh, in a P3 situation, if there is what kind of a situation, could you help, uh, could you elaborate on that a little more, Trustee Williams, please? I could if I can, Madam Chair. Um, yep, absolutely. I'd be going to, because I'm thinking of something particular that happened last year. Um, and I'm thinking of like snow removal. I mean, we don't contract that out at P3s, the partner does. And so my, I would wonder that if there was an accident, um, who, who takes responsibility for that? Is it us as the school district because we occupy the building or is it our partner who, who lets out the maintenance contracts? Chief? Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Superintendent Kishin Shindani, I will jump on this one. It's very complex because all of the sidewalks around the school, um, we actually have maps. Some of the sidewalks are cleaned and monitored and the responsibility of the city of Calgary and they contract out to other service providers and some parts of sidewalks in front of our buildings are our responsibility and we expect our caretakers to clean particular sections of it or uh, Superintendent Brad McDonald at his department they look after other components of it and so depending upon the situation if it is a slip or fall like we have insurance as a district to cover all of our students and staff within our building so that's definitely covered by us but what hap what tends to happen in a situation like that is people end up suing the district which is then covered or looked after by our, our insurance provider and then uh, there's nothing stopping them for from suing the province like people nowadays can sue whoever they want to sue so it really depends on a case by case basis and the complexities of the case so you're the question that you've asked trustee williams isn't black and white there's a lot of gray in there and it's on a case by case basis for sure thank you all right just a just a couple of questions on my end um in looking at the report and uh thank you for outlining a lot of a lot of uh, resources and strategies. I'm wondering, and it may not be the appropriate place for it, but one of the things that the board and the district has done um, in recognition of uh, the mental health and well-being of our students is we've um, done the very best that we can to bring our parents into it through our parent trustee forum and uh, using speakers like Dr. Schwartz uh, from the U of C to speak specifically to anxiety and COVID, for example. And you know those are those are I think really really important things because we also recognize that our parents are our first and best educators, and I think that there's a place for us to um, 
make note of that. These things are seen by Alberta Ed and, and uh, integrating parents as active partners, I think is an important thing. So that was um, the first one. And then the second one, um, and I don't know if this is still the case, but St. John's Reception Centre, when our families come in and they're directed there, our new arrivals, um, the students are certainly assessed, but is there not uh, an assessment that takes place in a broader sense that speaks to the well being and the access to the resources and um, navigating safely as well? And would there be a place for including that data within a report uh, like this as well? Because it does speak to um, encouraging the provision of safe learning environments and uh, dealing with other issues that could be multi layer and complex for those families. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, definitely uh, two great considerations. Anything is possible. This is the first draft of this particular report. And so Superintendent Haloka, what are your thoughts on the second component? Uh, if I may, Chair Martin, mm -hmm. are you looking for something further than what is on page three? Because those are the supports we provide to- Hang on. Farmers. Maybe I've walked right by it and that's entirely possible. Page. Or maybe you're looking for something else. I just want to make sure. Kindergarten consultants. Um, yeah, if, if that data is captured in here, that's fine. Um, I oh, oh, sorry, it is. It's right there at St. John's Reception Center. All right, I walk that one back. Um, but I do think that there's a, a place to to be had for the work that we do with our broader parent community as well. Any other trustees with comments at this point? Seeing none, then we look forward to uh, to seeing this come back in two weeks for um, for approval, and then to um, a subsequent meeting to debrief. That will get us to seven, which is board decision um, items, and we have uh, number seven point one, which is uh, the parent and trustee forum agenda, and that forum is March thirtieth. And you have um, the uh, presentation there. I'll turn it to the chief for introduction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Big thank you. Uh, shout out here to Ms. Tanya Van Brunt, our Director of Communications and Community Relations. Uh, she's put together this draft agenda for your consideration this evening and hopefully approval. Uh, Martin Parnell had the opportunity to meet and talk to Martin just the eight the other day. He's a multiple world record uh, holder, motivational speaker, advocate for children and uh, equity in the world. And I think that uh, we're going to have a home run with him if he's our keynote speaker for that evening. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, two trustees, questions or comments on the agenda as presented. I see Trustee Ivanelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a comment. I think the guest speaker, if, if we choose to uh, prove that, will be such refreshing change. We've heard a lot of facts and data. It'll be nice to have uh, a presentation on some uh, personal experiences in a little bit different direction that I feel it will be very well received by our parents and us as trustees. A little bit of positivity, which we are all in need of. Thank you for that, Trustee Ivanelli. Any other comments from trustees? Okay, if I can, um, trustees, uh, trust, um, Tanya will be, uh, as our communication director, help facilitating the uh, creation of, of um, the materials for this. One of those items is the uh, trustee update uh, that you know will be part of every, um, uh, every forum. And these will be things that are topical and uh, we have time for a subsequent agenda, but I would like you to give some thought to what you think would be important for our parents uh, to hear. Um, you know, typically at this time of year, it's um, things like budget, capital. Um, there are a number of, of contemplations there. Um, of course, we have a municipal election coming up as well, and we typically do um, some work on that at that point in time. Um, and again, we don't need to make that call tonight, but we will need to be um, asking for input. Is there anybody that has uh, something that they would like to share at this point? Is that a new hand, Trustee Ivanelli? Yes, it is, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, we will be discussing later on uh, ASCA, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if that might be a good time to perhaps share it with our parents and include it in the agenda for the next forum. 
Okay, sounds good. Uh, does anyone else have anything at this particular point in time? All right, I will um, ask you to consider that. Trustee Williams, your hand. Yeah, I have a long way to go to get to that little hand one. Um, yeah, there is one that I think is relative that we should probably go through with our councils, although it's, you know, right now we're not sure what's going to happen, but it has raised some questions. And I would say that we should probably have um, something on there about school closures. Okay. That will um, possibly be timely as, as we all know, we've got uh, two that are under consideration right now. And while no decision has been made, that decision will be made on the 24th and uh, it may well be relevant as well. So uh, note made and uh, to the chief, um, you, you've had the conversation around the table. We'll refine it as we get closer uh, to that. We, you know, we've got a lot coming our way over the next week or two and, and uh, that may influence what, uh, what takes place there. So I will leave that here at this point in time and thank trustees for their thoughts. Um, that will move us to item eight, which is- uh, Sorry, Madam Chair. Yes. Sorry, you probably didn't see my hand go up. No, um, I sorry, missed it. My head was down. Yeah, normally we we um, share this responsibility, and we have a couple of trustees do the trustee update. Are you signing that tonight, or is that later? Uh, no, as as uh, we have our roster, and that would be you and Trustee Low okay. for this forum. So right. you will be doing the updates at this point in time. Okay. And uh, there you go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, and I, that's your hand gone. So there are no further hands. I just don't want to miss any, anyone. Uh, that will move us to 8.1, the budget update, and back to the chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this evening, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the critical worker benefit program and its impact here on the district. And if you recall, this is a Government of Alberta initiative. I want to thank Superintendent Narin Kishin Shindani and his team because uh, the program, although it uh, benefits uh, certain groups of workers within our organization has caused a considerable amount of work for uh, Superintendent Kishin Shindani and his team behind the scenes to implement. So good news, but uh, definitely an extra work on behalf of everyone. Over to you, Superintendent Kishin Shindani. Thank you, Dr. Zumlis. Madam Chair, uh, this uh, critical worker benefit was announced uh, a couple of weeks ago, as, uh, as we all know. Uh, the key uh, pieces that have uh, surfaced in the past couple of weeks is further clarity in uh, which category of employees this would apply to. The initial guidance was very broad and it uh, triggered a lot of questions, but uh, happy to report that we've been, been able to work with Alberta Education, get the uh, specific details. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, the, the numbers obviously are still being worked on at the next board meeting. I will be able to report the exact number of uh, employees who qualified for it. It would suffice to say that at this point, each of those employees would receive the $1,200 payment net of of uh, the statutory deductions. Uh, and uh, over and above that, the district would be on the hook for the, well, well we'll have to pay the employer portions uh, of the statutory uh, submissions. Uh, we have uh, reason to believe that we will be reimbursed for those, uh, but we have yet to see that in writing. Other than that, Madam Chair, we have the budget process that continues. We are waiting with abated breath for the provincial budget, which is uh, expected tomorrow. And uh, the budget process will then uh, kickstart into a new higher gear once we have that uh, information. Open to any questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, two trustees for questions. Seeing none, um, thank you. Thank you for the update, Superintendent uh, Kishish and Danny. I know that uh, we are a day out from the budget and uh, I think we'll probably have a lot to talk about in about 24 hours, but uh, appreciate this update and uh, thank you. Thank you for providing this. Um, that will get us to 8.2, which is our COVID-19 update back to the chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Attached to, to this memo are the parent letters that have been sent home since our last regular board meeting. Our current numbers when it comes to COVID-19 as of today, we're sitting at 1,350 uh, combined staff and students in self-isolation, and we're dealing with 22 schools. So these numbers 
Um, right now, uh, I've kind of plateaued. We're happy that we did see a downwards trend, but they are, you know, kind of hovering around the 12 to 1300 uh, marker. And so we're trending in the right direction and we hope and pray that we continue to go um, to continue to go down as a district. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, to trustees for uh, any questions of clarification or commentary. And seeing none, uh, we look forward to uh, to the next update on this and hopefully we will continue a positive trend on this. And thank you again on behalf of the board for providing the frequent communications that you do with our families. Uh, that's really important uh, right now and, and I know that it's appreciated. Uh, that will get us to our item 8.3 uh, to the chief report. Uh, Trustee Ivanelli, you would request a more clear, um, um, conversation uh, around this uh, report. I'll turn it I to did, you. I did, Madam Chair. Thank you. But I believe that Dr. Simlis did have his hand up with something to say. For the oh, last I'm item. so sorry. Uh, my apologies, Madam Chair. Uh, Omar did send us a note saying that uh, I'm not sure if the approval for our memo 7.1 will take place in a board motion that comes later or if it was, should happen now. Omar, did I capture that correctly for you? Thank you for that. You know, yeah. And I believe we had Myra. Myra, you were um, on that motion, which is just fine. We have another motion to pass after this item, and we will um, we will pass both of them uh, at that point in time. But thank you very much, Omar. Uh, we conclude the uh, chief co um, report conversation, and then we'll pass those last two motions. To Trustee Ivanelli. Oh, sorry. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. In regards to the chief report, and more specifically on the website, in the fall, we had um, an excellent uh, PD session on the new website. And since then, parents, staff, ourselves, trustees have had an opportunity to navigate through the website. My question is if we would be able to have um, a request actually for another meeting date or perhaps an opportunity to give feedback on the new website. And another question too is, is it completed? Is the the launch of the new website completed at this point in time. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so it is true that we, we transitioned to our new website in the fall. And so we've only been utilizing it for a few months. And like any change, there is an implementation dip. There are some areas that we are continuing to beef up and to work on, but we are very proud of uh, the work that's gone into the new website. I wanna thank uh, Ms. Tanya Von Brunt and her entire team for the hours and hours that they've put into this. Uh, and we're always open to feedback and we would value any kind of suggestions to improve it to go forward. Um, I would like to hear from Ms. Van Brunt, who's in our call today. Uh, maybe Van, Ms. Van Brunt, you can share kind of your, uh, the work that's happening behind the scenes on uh, the website, because it is ongoing. Thank you, uh, Chief Superintendent Zoomless. Um, through the Chief to the Board, yes, we are doing a lot of work on the website and we are taking a phased in approach. So uh, we are currently still just completing phase one uh, in terms of elements that would be part of that first release and then working on additional pieces um, in subsequent phases. So you will see additional functionality and some changes coming as we go along. We are dealing uh, with a vendor that uh, also has had uh, a great deal of success and attention as a result of our website. So they are taking on new clients. So we are working hard to ensure that they're still working on our phases uh, because they have gained a lot of notoriety based on the success of our site, which is uh, nice to hear. Um, and as well, uh, subsequent to that, we are also developing a survey tool. Um, as, as we speak, we are working on a survey that we're gonna be sending out to our key stakeholder groups, both internal and external, to get feedback on uh, how have you found the website thus far? What are other things you'd like to be seeing? Uh, what isn't working? What is working? So there are lots of um, pieces in motion 
at this time. And so you will be seeing more and have opportunities for formal input. But um, as uh, Chief Superintendent Zumlis uh, mentioned, we are always welcome to um, feedback uh, from you at any point in time um, outside of the survey as well. So Madam Chair, I would recommend it to kind of, uh, I guess it's to the trustees to decide if they want to add this to a special meeting or a regular meeting for conversation in the future. And that, you know, I would, I think that's actually a good thing because we would love to showcase some of the stuff, but as a secondary thing, if uh, trustee Ivanelli has, or any trustees have immediate feedback, then please uh, share it with chair Martin. Chair Martin will share it with me and we can act. Why wait when we can act upon those things now? And then let's uh, continue to work together as we uh, help Tanya and her team uh, continue to improve the awesome website that we have now. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. I've got Trustee Wellman. And thank you, Madam Chair. Just a very quick question um, uh, through you to Superintendent Zoomless. Um, Ms. Van Brunt had alluded to the fact that we're in the first phase. How many phases are there to getting this website fully up and functional? Uh, Go ahead. Sorry, um, through the chief, uh, we right now have three phases planned. And what we have done is prioritize functionality for those phases. So for example, in the, um, I, I believe it's phase, phase three, you would see more of the things that we had on our internal site, like the forums and those kind of things that were community builders, but not necessarily core to um, what we do at Calgary Catholic. So they're coming in pieces. And so uh, that's what we've determined in terms of each phase based on priority. Thank you. Trustee Ivanelli. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would uh, appreciate uh, Dr. Zumas' suggestion to perhaps put this on a special board meeting agenda item. Mm -hmm. um, feedback and knowledge is power, and um, I would certainly appreciate having that time. I mean, I, I, I understand the amount of work that has gone into the new website, and it's a great tool for all of our stakeholders and our parents. Um, I just think as trustees, if we could have a little bit more time working around, it would be useful. Okay, thank you for that. Um, any trustees object to having that on a special meeting agenda? Uh, okay, and I've got Trustee Rath and Trustee Williams with their hands up, Trustee Rath. Um, hi, thank you. Yeah, no, our special meetings are so full and, and I think um, you know where we can use our time best is to provide feedback to you um, on the website so that that can go to Tanya's team um, I just know that our special meetings are full. I know I've put myself on the next agenda and um, I just think we need to give them some time to, uh, you know, to get things more up to date. All right. I will tell you what, I, I'm going to have a look at what we've got on our agendas. I'll, um, if I can, I'll ask Omar to send what we have uh, tentatively on our agendas coming up and um, we'll go from there on that. We have had a request. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to ask trustees to send to me directly uh, commentary that you have on the website, and I'll get that to Brian and I to our chief. And I have Trustee Williams. Thank you, Madam Chair. And and actually, through you to the chief, um, one of the difficulties I've had, and maybe it's coming in a different phase, is getting to my school's actual newsletter. Because what's happening is I'm getting everything that's on our district website. And then when I press the button for the school, I'm not seeing the one that they've actually got on that recording. Or pardon me, on that site. So I know some of the schools send me their personal one. But I thought that this was a way that these schools would be able to put their own personal information plus what's already on there for the district. So is there something I'm not doing? Because when I click on that school, I don't always get their letter. To the chief. Tanya, I'll defer to you. So the schools do have the um, capability to customize and put up their own information. Uh, so I'm not sure, maybe a school specific challenge, but uh, if that can be provided in the feedback, we will ensure that all the schools 
are uh, posting their newsletters in the proper spot. Okay, thank you. Trustee Ivanelli. Thank you, Madam Chair. Well, one question of clarification and another quick question. Um, Tanya mentioned there's three phases. So what does that timeline look like that might determine whether or when we put it on a special board meeting agenda? And as far as feedback goes, it, are we sending that directly to Tanya? Um, feedback goes directly to me and I'll get it to Dr. Zumlas, um, but I'll defer to Dr. Zumlas for the rest. Over to you, Tanya. So our, our expectation, our hope would be that by the end of this school year, we have the bulk of the work completed. But that being said, it will be largely determined on any hiccups we run into in terms of the design and the adding in the functionality. So we are relying heavily on our vendor to assist us in that regard. So it's it's dependent. Our, our hope is that by the end of June, we'll have everything up and running, but it de depends on what tweaks and, and adjustments we make as we go along and if we add certain components in. Thank you. Um, I had one more. Is it, I thought I had another hand up, but it's gone. Um, uh, that's it for you, Trustee Ivanelli? Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, proposal to add it to a special agenda. Um, I will look at the special agendas, special meeting agendas, and we'll go from, from there. And um, if you can get your comments into me, I will forward them on. And that would be uh, great. Uh, thank you for that. Um, with that, uh, we have a couple of motions and um, that will conclude uh, the public part of our meeting. So I will turn to Trustee Desu or Trustee Lowe, it was you that had your hand up, but it's back down. Yeah, I could speak. Yeah, it was me. I was just- Okay, I knew it was someone. I just Thanks. thought, you know, for efficiency, uh, I'm not sure why we need to pass through three people to get something to Tanya. If the chief was okay with it, could Omar not compile from the trustees? Because this is not a consensus thing. It's just input, individual input. So right. And I was like just respecting the process. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. No, appreciate that. I was just respecting the process that the board had agreed to, uh, that um, the information would go to Omar through the chair and also to the chief through the chair. But happy to defer to uh, if Dr. Zumlis is happy with people um, getting to Omar directly, that's fine. Um, th this one here to me is a process that you as trustees come up with. So I would defer back to you to please uh, decide on how you'd like to do that. I, to, I'm fine either way, whatever okay. you guys wanna do. Thank you, Trustee uh, Lohman. Yeah, Madam Chair, I certainly think we should just honor our process. It gets too confusing if we're, every time we do something, we, we change how we're gonna do it. So I think everything should go through the chair and we trust that you handle it. Thank you. Uh, all right, and that brings us, unless there's any more, uh, any other asks? Can't, nope, seeing none. Uh, then we are at the end of our, our public agenda and we have two motions that need to be uh, put on the table. Trustee uh, D'Souza. Yeah, I'd like to move Madam Chair that the Board of Trustees approves the proposed agenda for the March Parent uh, and Trustee Forum. Thank you. The motion's on the floor. Is there any further conversation on this? All right, seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? And I have the motion up so I cannot see the screen. Uh, are there any opposed? Hearing none, that motion's carried. Um, and we have our second motion. Uh, if someone would care to proceed with that. I can read it. Oh, oh I'll, I'll do it. I haven't done okay. one in a really long time. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I move that the Board of Trustees directs the Chief Superintendent to evaluate whether to make a fundamental change proposal to the Board under Policy 14 and provide a report to the Board of Trustees in the March 17, 2021 Board Meeting Portfolio. Thank you. Any requests or, or questions of clarification? Trustee Wellman? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a friendly amendment. Can we add um, to the board special uh, to the special board meeting portfolio? 
because it's a special meeting on the 17th, not a regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Is there anyone who would not see that as a friendly amendment? Hearing none. And I'm not seeing any hands up, although I'm not seeing all of them. So I'll ask anybody to speak verbally if you've got any questions. Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none. That motion is carried. And that will bring us to the end of our um, public meeting. And I will close us uh, with a prayer from our, our faith book, which is absolutely lovely. And this one comes from Amy at St. Patrick. Uh, if you could join me in the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Amen. amen. And this is my faith prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us safe in these uncertain times. I pray that everyone has faith in you to know that we will get through this together. I thank you for giving us strength. And I ask for all those who are going through hard times to trust in you. I ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that will, um, with that, uh, we have a wee bit more of uh, business to conclude today. This will conclude the formal, uh, the business uh, public part of our meeting. And I'd like to thank those who have uh, been a part of our meeting today. And uh, thank you for being with us. We will take a 10 minute break and we'll reconvene to the chief. Thank you, Chair Martin. I know that we have the two guests that are with us, and one of those individuals is Pina Lamb. And uh, I believe I know Pina Lamb, if I'm if we're thinking the right person. Pina, uh, you're the teacher that I know, Tony Dapici's friend, is that correct? And I'm not sure, Omar, if you can unmute her so I could just, I just want to say hello before she leaves us today. Hi, Pina, you can talk now. Oh, hello, Chief Superintendent. Yes, that is me. Yes, oh, Tony Dapache's friend, correct. <laughs> oh, that's right. And you are a teacher with us, or you were a teacher with us. Are you still, I'm not sure if you're still working with us or not. I was a teacher for about 12 years, but I'm not working with you in the capacity of uh, an educator, but as a parent and, and supporter in other ways. Well, thank you for being with us this evening and joining us for our board meeting and uh, hopefully your understanding and knowing the process and all of the important decisions that our board of trustees make. And the other individual that I see there is Blair Daniels. And Blair, I don't think I know you, but if Omar, if we can unmute Blair for a second. Hello, Blair. Hi. Hi. And uh, you're with, we can hear you. So uh, I know it's just so awkward, right? You're in our meeting, we're doing all this talking and you're not saying <laughs> anything. So we just wanted to reach out and say hi. Is there anything that you'd like to share with us or, or tell us about you? Um, no, not at this time. Just thank you for, uh, thank you for including me. And I've, I've enjoyed sitting in um, on the meetings with you guys. Great, okay. Well, blessings on the rest of your day and thanks for being with us today. You thank as you, well, thank you. Thanks very much for being here. All right, we will take 10 minutes and we'll um, reconvene. Great. Mary, are you still there? Uh, we just need- I am. Oh, we thanks. All right, and we have a few motions that have come out of uh, the work that we've done today. Uh, we've passed some already. Trust if, uh, thank you, Omar. Okay, that I'm just gonna, okay, never mind. Actually, I don't wanna touch my screen. Uh, Board of Trustees directs the Chief Superintendent to provide administration input um, to her regarding, I can't read that end, ask a resolutions package um, by the March 10th regular board meeting. Okay, everyone good with the wording? Okay, hearing no questions, I'll call the, does someone want to read it? And then we'll vote. Trustee D'Souza. Sure. Um, I move that the Board of Trustees directs the Chief Superintendent to provide administrative input on the ASCA resolution package 2021 by, Mo by the March 10th, 2021 regular board meeting. Yeah, thank you. Any questions or clarification thoughts? I'll call the question, all those in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, that motion's carried. Okay, and who would like to read this one? 
Madam Chair. Oh, Madam there you are. With Trustee Madam Wellman. Chair, I would move that the Board of Trustees directs the Chief Superintendent to advise school council chairs that the district will fund up to 22 count pardon me, up to 20 school council chairs to attend the virtual ASCA 2021 uh, general meeting. Preference is to be given to council chairs that have not previously attended an ASCA general meeting. Okay. Any questions? Hearing none, calling the question, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great, that motion's carried. Um, I'm wondering if we need another one, uh, right under the, uh, the one speaking to the chief superintendent providing administrative input. Um, we don't need to do it today, but if we could have a motion prepared for March 10th that would direct um, the chief superintendent to ensure uh, that chairs attending ASCA have access to um, the admin recommendations on any resolutions, if that would. Um, we don't need to do it tonight. <laughs> We have to see what the recommendations are, but uh, Trustee Lowe, thank you. Yeah, actually, I believe that it goes to all school councils so that it supports them in having conversations at their council table. So we made that same motion February 26 last year. So I work and just pull it off of our motion sheet from last year. And then populate it for the 10th and then that will still give them plenty of time. Okay, so we've got that. Um, and it's not a motion, but if we could place on the May meeting agenda, um, ask up for the conversations um, that, that uh, the board indicated they wanted to have. And I think that I've, that's all I've got. I don't think there are any other motions. Uh, Trustee Lowe? Sorry. Yep, yeah, sorry, Trustee Lowe's hand I didn't put up. my hand down. Oh, sorry, okay. Trustee Ivanelli. Yeah, are we going to be discussing ASCA at the next parent trustee forum? Um, yeah, that was one of the things that had come up as a potential um, conversation. I've asked trustees to send me their um, their thoughts on what could uh, uh, what would you know would be identified as as um, you know topics that would be useful. I have had some feedback already, and I'd have to get out of my screen and I'll read to you what I've got. Uh, elections and encouraging candidates and voting budget will be timely sharing the impacts of the provincial budget, ASCA update, and we will have just approved our capital plan. So that's the list that I have uh, right now. And um, I'll, I'll maybe give people a week if that works to get me their feedback. And then from there, um, actually we can, we can give it a couple of weeks. Things are happening so quickly, God only knows. So let's give two weeks for that. I see Trustee Wellman, your hand. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a question. I mean, I have no problem putting ask on the uh, parent trustee forum. I just wanna know what. Um, we had just uh, you know, moved a motion saying that we're going to support school council chairs going to the ASCA conference. We've deferred the, the broader conversation about continued membership until budget in some time in May. Um, right. So I wouldn't want us to bring forward any conflicting or confusing information to our council chairs at the March meeting. If it's a matter of just saying, hey, you know, uh, if you haven't got your name in, uh, registration deadline is hmm. whatever and when it is, and that you'll be provided with all kinds of support. If that's I believe that that was the intent. If that's the intent, that's fine. Yep, Trustee Lowe. Yes, and I would also see it probably being uh, sharing the their ability to have a conversation at their council meeting about the resolutions, right? That those are out and encouraging yep. them all to look at them. Like that, we do that every year at this time, we have that same kind of update. We do us. have that every every year. And there are some that are salient. I mean, if you're looking at choice and education, um, it'll be a fast 10 minutes. I think we also need to make sure that they know of the um, significant change in fee structure. And yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yep. And if I could, Madam Chair, one more question I wanted to ask as far as ask is concerned. Uh, normally we have uh, our admin support. So I'm trusting that uh, Tanya will be attending or uh, online with that conference or somebody else from admin. And we normally have a trustee. I know last year it was trustee Ivanelli. And so if there's another trustee that hasn't had an opportunity to support ask in that role, maybe um, they should uh, voice their, their interest in doing so. You know, I, sorry. I have never, sorry, people speaking. I've got uh, Trustee Lowe, is that a new hand or your old hand? 
it's an old hand, but I thought we weren't doing correspondence and events. I no, we we're not. That. And it was going to be my suggestion that we have that. It's not time sensitive. We can have that conversation um, either at our special meeting or March 10th. We don't need to decide at this point who is going. I have Trustee D'Souza, Trustee no. Williams. No, Madam Chair. Okay, Trustee Williams. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, to Omar through the chief, would it be possible to add that as an agenda item? Trustee attendance, admin uh, at ASCA. And we'll figure out where to pop that one in later. All right, is there anything else? All right, seeing none, uh, then I believe we've actually come to the end of our meeting and um, I will close it with a prayer. Uh, this time from one of my own, uh, Casey from St. Bonaventure. And um, I will ask us to center ourselves in the name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, you are the North Star to my night sky. You lead me with your light when I am lost and have no faith. You give me faith when I need it and always guide me to do the right thing. Thank you for my family and my friends as they help me to become a better person. Thank you. Thank you for me, educate, thank, I, I think what was meant was thank you for education uh, because I know that many others do not receive one. Thank you for my amazing life and for giving me faith in you. Please help the others that are not as fortunate as me. Please give them strength and courage to know that things will get better. Please help all the people around the world who are getting discriminated against because of their color, religions, or their feelings. Please give everyone the faith to carry on and give them the strength to believe in themselves. Grade eight, that's amazing. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. We'll adjourn this meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be here for a wee bit because I just like to get my notes done before I leave. Um, if I can, we have had a request for, for a brief caucus uh, to the chief. You looked like you were wanting to say something. Yeah, one thing, like I see a lot of people are dressed so nice in pink that I'm wondering if uh, any